that's a double commemoration, not only of uh, Shakespeare, which Sir Stanley is going to lead us in, but also of the partner of the founder of this theater. Because we have a small ceremony in honor of John Barton, in which it's my honor and privilege to be asked to present John Barton with a Lifetimes Achievement Award from the British Shakespeare Association. And the actor and great Shakespearean Andrew Jarvis is here to represent John Barton, who unfortunately cannot be with us tonight, to receive that award. I should explain that the British Shakespeare Association, represented by Peter Smith here this evening, is uh, one of the most important institutions bringing actors, academics, school teachers, and the general public together, exactly, in fact, the kind of vision that Peter Hall had for this teaching theater. So it's a very singular, distinguished, and uh, wonderful honor that um, the British Shakespeare Association is giving in commemoration of John Barton. John Barton has been such an enormous influence on all our thinking and all our appreciation of Shakespeare for so many years. He burst into my world at my, I think it was 15th birthday party, when suddenly I realized people were no longer doing the twist, but watching the Wars of the Roses on television. <laughs> and the most formative Shakespearean experience for me was seeing four times in a row John Barton's wonderful Troilus and Cressida. It was a Troilus and Cressida very much of that late 60s, I think it was 1970 moment, which had to do with sexual permissiveness. It had, as much as it had to do, one thought, with Shakespeare, it had a, a, a split second um, of um, total nudity on the stage, I seem to remember, <laughs> but it also had the relationship between Alan Howard and Dinsdale Landon, I think played Patroclus, uh, as a very early positive statement of a gay relationship on stage. In all kinds of ways, it was a tremendously provocative, inspiring production, uh, typical of the kind of um, outreach that the Royal Shakespeare Company was then making into the, into the wider society and the wider community. Of course, John Barton was blessed with um, a marriage to Anne Barton, who we must remember too, uh, not least for her um, extraordinary program notes. And we, of course, all read her books, but she made the program note into an art form at, at Stratford. And we all treasure those. It was a most extraordinary and powerful intellectual marriage of true minds. So John Barton has been so much part of the relationship, the marriage indeed, between academia and the theater, that it's very appropriate that in this theater, which his partner created, where we celebrate the marriage of acting and academia, that he should be awarded this uh, Lifetimes Achievement Award this evening. And um, I'm honored to ask Andrew Jarvis to receive the Oak um, presentation from the uh, British Shakespeare Association, which has the inscription, even now I put myself to your direction. Oh. Macbeth, I should say, because we're in a theater of the Scottish play, uh, to Andrew Jarvis, who is going to, I believe, pass it to John Barton. I am indeed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Just briefly, uh, I'm Andrew Jarvis. I'm on the board of the British Shakespeare Association. I'm also chair of its fellowship committee. And as many of you, I'm sure, will know, every year we award honorary fellowships to two outsh outstanding Shakespeareans from the different constituencies of education, performance, academia, or anything else that you care to think of, who, but who have demonstrated this outstanding achievement. Last year, it was Emeritus Professor Ann Thompson and John Barton. And in previous years, it's been Stanley, and it's been pe wonderful people like Reginald Folks and uh, John Russell Brown, but that has, it comes as part of a lifetime achievement. Before, I, w I just want to talk briefly of two giants the one who um, we, we'll all be aware of tonight. John is the main giant. He's still with us. But we also lost another giant last week, which was Michael Bogdanov. He was certainly a giant in my life. Uh, I can say, well, I'll say the same thing about John, that when I 
came to my, under Michael's wing in 1986 with the English Shakespeare Company. We did the Henry IVs and the Henry V, and then we went on and we did the, the whole of Wars of the Roses. Michael changed the way I thought about Shakespeare. Two years ago at the Stirling Conference of the British Shakespeare Association, two further giants were in conversation, which was Michael Bogdanov and John Drakakis. And they, I don't know if any of you were there, they just sat and talked. And it was like, I think I just died and went to heaven, actually, <laughs> hearing these two. But I remember, realized at the time that a lot of what I now believe about Shakespeare came from Michael. And I have drunk his toast every single night ever since his death and will continue to do so for as long as I have breath, I think. That's Michael. The second one is John. John had, I think, probably an even greater influence on me when I first went to Stratford in 1978 to the Royal Shakespeare Company. I had, up to that time, suffered very badly at school and 10 years in rep, being taught Shakespeare very badly and then performing it very badly. And when I look back on the performances I gave in rep for 10 years, I blush. My touchstone is still talked about <laughs> with the sign of the cross in front of it in, at the Castle Theatre in Farnham. But I went to Stratford and suddenly the lights came on and it was John and it was Sis Berry and it was the actors that had worked under John. Jeff Dench, Bernard Lloyd, Patrick Stewart who were passing on what John was giving. And that was that extraordinary ability to look at a piece of Shakespearean text, and from my point of view as an actor, to point out to you all the clues that Shakespeare has left for you in order to help you to act. Peter Hall, obviously who, who sort of co-founded in some ways the RSC with John, has his book Shakespeare's Direction to the Actors. And that's exactly what it is. And that's what John pointed out. But also, a wonderful thing that Richard said, which I want to celebrate, my particular kind of uh, passion, is the bringing together of academia and performance. There are many... It, it's worse on our side. There are many actors who won't go there. Oh, academics, well, they know. No, I just get up and do it, love. No, there's so much I have learned. I mean, being on the board of the uh, British Shakespeare Association, reading people like Stanley, like Richard, like John Drakakis, like Peter Smith, it's suddenly you think this all needs to be fed and come together, and that's my passion in life is to try and do that. John, as Richard has just said, absolutely did that from being dean, I think it was of St. John's College in Oxford at the age of 23, and then coming to Stratford and forming that company, helping Peter Hall to kind of take that company forward. Last year, I'm sure many of you would have seen it, Trevor, none, restaged John and P J. Peter Hall's um, Wars of the Roses. And um, I, unfortunately, I was working away, so I couldn't see it. But I just got the DVDs um, a few weeks ago. And I watch it, and I go, I mean, I just tear my hair out at some of the Shakespeare I see, uh, not least down by the Thames. But anyway, um, I watch the Wars of the Roses, John Barton, and go, that's it. Thank you. That's how you do it. Clarity, the use of language, the knowledge of antithesis and how metaphors work and how you swing them around and everything that John could, could teach us. That was, and it was so wonderful. I, I wish I could have been here. Apparently John came one night and got a standing ovation. I'm quite right too. A wonderful, a wonderful giant. And it will be my privilege to take to him next week this and also a little book which Alison Findlay, who's the chair now of the British Shakespeare Association, unfortunately can't be here tonight, but Alison put together, we, between us, sorry, let me start that sentence again, between us we got people to pay tribute, so I got people to write things, we got people on the night to say things, uh, and, and Richard was predominant in receiving this on behalf of John. Unfortunately, the tape didn't work for the recording, because I promised John that he could have it. However, this is working, so hopefully I might be able to take that but also, Alison has put this wonderful book together with photographs and with wonderful tributes. Well, you know, people like Janet Sussman, Ian McKellen, Patrick Stewart. I mean, just boundless. So it will be a joy to go and see him. And it will, I shall probably pass out with excitement as I take his hand. 
because I don't think he remembers me that well. I wasn't that notorious in the company, but he's always very sweet and says he does, but he, he's just one of those people who is a giant. So to John, thank you. Richard has looked after this for six months. It's great weight has been in the rows, but it's the right place for it to have been. But I thank you, Richard, for passing it on on this occasion. It's an honour. Thank you. Thank you, Andrew. A heart of oak. John Barton achieved what so many academics dream of. They crossed the frontier from academia into the theatre world. 